I'm in Helsinki, Finland's cool capital, with two days to explore and drink plenty of coffee. And it's January, so believe me, it's very cool. Helsinki lies on a series of peninsulas and islands that face the Baltic and as you approach from the sea you're welcomed by the twin cathedrals, the Orthodox Uspensky Cathedral and the Lutheran Cathedral of Helsinki. But why does this Nordic capital have two cathedrals that look like they've been transplanted from St Petersburg? Time for a 30 second history lesson. Finland is actually a relatively young country. It's only been independent since 1917. Before that, as the Grand Duchy of Finland, it was part of the Russian Empire for over a hundred years. And before that, it was ruled by Sweden. is a must-see if you're here. It's a showcase of all of the most important artists that Finland has produced. And there was one tiny self-portrait in there that absolutely blew me away. Oh yes, and it's got a really good cafe as well. Quite possibly my favourite railway station in the whole world. I first came to Helsinki in 1991 interrailing and I, it was the furthest I'd ever been at the time. I can remember looking up at those four guardians and thinking, wow, I'm a long way from home. Time for some hardcore coffee. Helsinki has three must-see churches, the two Russian-looking cathedrals and a church that looks like, well, a rock. In fact, you'd be forgiven for walking straight past it. It's down there. sound of the organ. Apparently the acoustics are spectacular. Now it's time for some music appreciation. No, not my usual alternative noise. I'm talking classical. Despite growing up speaking Swedish, changing its name to Jean, and composing during the time of Russian rule, Sibelius is Finland's national composer, bar none. 
His music is now synonymous with Finnish identity. I love this sculpture. I like to imagine that it's drawing the energy from the cold Finnish rock and then the tubes blow into the breeze. Finlandia or the Karelia suite. I've read that when you trek out to the Sibelius monument and it's cold, the place to get a hot drink is a little cafe on the water called Regatta. It's very cosy in here and it smells of Christmas. Well, the cinnamon buns were fresh out of the oven and everybody was having them, so what was I going to do? Also good to know they had an enormous amount of gluten-free and vegan treats in there. If an alien from outer space suddenly landed in Helsinki, then it would probably think that the woods and forests of Finland were populated by these funny little creatures. They are, of course, Moomins, and you'll see them absolutely everywhere. The Moomins are troll-like creatures, playful and living in harmony with nature. The stories were created during the 40s and 50s by Torve Janssen. And whilst around the world that's how she's now known, she was in fact a prolific artist. Her large, playful and evocative frescoes can be seen in the Helsinki Art Museum. in the Helsinki Art Museum belongs to the city itself and it's housed in a spectacular building called the Tennis Palace built in the 1930s for, you've guessed it, tennis. I've just got time to dive into the National Museum but first, what a building! I learned an awful lot from that. I think we all think of Finland as being a very modern, tolerant and prosperous country. But what's clear is that there's been a lot more to it than that. It's been very, very turbulent, not only in the times before independence, but even afterwards and far more recently. In the 60s and 70s, mass emigration to Sweden because of unemployment, and then further unemployment in a huge recession of the early 90s. There was also a really harrowing and moving account of the history of a group of ethnic Finns called the Ingrians who used to live in the region around present-day St Petersburg and particularly during the 1950s purges of the Soviet Union they were exiled to the farthest reaches of Siberia and to such terrible terrible conditions and much of their culture has simply vanished but then as light relief Finland style, there were also moomins and sauna ladles. Now, after a long day, I have a craving for curry, so um, I'll see you tomorrow.
This morning I'm taking the ferry across the harbour to the sea fortress known as Suomenlina. I don't think I'll be getting a suntan on deck though. Around 10 minutes later and we're here already and it's bitterly cold. The sea fortress was built by the Swedes and it was originally called Sveaborg. They built it to try and fend off the Russian Empire but in the end they had to surrender it. Then, under Russian rule, it came under a heavy attack during the Crimean War by English and French forces. After Finnish independence, it was renamed Suomenlina. And it's not a museum island. Around 800 people actually live here, and there's a waiting list. It gets very busy in the summer, but I think today it's going to be fairly exclusive. Well, if anyone does live here, they're staying inside today. And who can blame them? The icy wind just blasts in from the Baltic and comes through these tunnels and freezes you to the bone. I can't even imagine what it must have been like if you were garrisoned here during the 18th and 19th centuries. I'm at the fortress at the southern tip of the island and this is where you'll find all the heavy artillery. This is the King's Gate, so named because it's where the King of Sweden came ashore in 1752 to inspect the fortress. Whether he chose to come in the summer or the winter, I don't know. I'd recommend the summer though. Time to go! weather. I think I'd rather go for coffee. If you're a fan of Art Nouveau then you simply won't be able to put your camera away because you'll be snapping every doorway, every turret, every window. There are so many little features to see as you walk down almost every street.
You'll see Carl Fatzer's chocolate everywhere you go in Helsinki. But this is the original cafe with its fantastic Art Deco facade. Let's take a look. I think I'm going to enjoy this. This salted caramel cake is, well, what can I say? It's to die for. I'd read that you shouldn't gossip in the back of the cafe because the acoustics of the ceiling meant that everyone could hear what you were saying. Now, I thought that was probably really exaggerated, but it's completely true. As soon as I sat down, it felt like there was a loudspeaker above my head pumping out a German conversation. And I looked around that it was a couple way over in the corner. So what's great about Helsinki? Well, I love its architecture, I love the spaciousness, I love its trams, the fact that it's got both Scandinavia and Russia in its DNA. A great positive vibe. It's just a really cool capital.